Hello everybody and welcome to day 18 of my beginner sewing course. I hope you are well and today we're going to be learning how to do shirring. So shirring is basically um, when you take a top and you can like stretch it out and then when you uh, let it go it just goes back to normal. Uh, that's actually uh, done using elastic thread. So it's just like a regular thread except it's elastic. So let's get into it. So when you're shirring fabric, there are two things to note. First is that the top thread has to be a regular uh, thread. So I'm just using all-purpose um, white thread right now because it matches with my elastic thread. This elastic thread is what's going to go in your bobbin. And you can't wind that bobbin on your sewing machine. You have to do it by hand. Here I already had one done, so I'm not going to use my thread from this. I, just, I don't have to waste more fabric or thread <laughs> so let me just show you how it's done i'm going to undo it let me just get that out of the way and the way that you're going to uh thread your bobbin is basically just how um you would do it on your machine except you're doing it yourself so this edge i'm gonna cut the tip i think okay that's better Okay, so how you're gonna do this is basically just how you would do it on your sewing machine. So you're gonna find the hole and pull your thread through from the inside towards the outside. Just like that. And now you're gonna hold that in place while you roll your thread. And you don't want to pull on your thread, like don't do that. Like just place it gently and try to make it as even as possible. And I know that some people say that when they pull it, um, the shirring turns out better. So maybe that's what your sewing machine is going to do. So you can try that if you would like, but I would say try this method first of just rolling it around not tightly you can give like a little bit of tension just not too much and as you can see our elastic thread is a lot thicker than our regular thread but that's normal so now you're going to take your bobbin and place it in that p again and insert it in your sewing machine so just hold on to that then pull on this tail and place it where it's supposed to go so just here for me and then just let it go. Then that's going to spin a little bit, but that's okay. And then just put this right back in. And now you can just uh, thread your sewing machine. And now, as usual, you're going to want to put down your needle and grab that bottom thread. Uh, try to leave a long tail because as you can see it's going to uh, bounce right back and trying to get your needle to grab the bottom thread is going to be difficult and you might uh, have to do it a couple of times before you actually succeed so when you're shirring you're actually um, going to be making a lot of rows so uh, you'll be sewing one line here and then uh, turn your fabric sew a line like this and then continue on another row and then do that same thing here then continue and all those stitches right here are going to be uh, within your seam allowance so they won't be visible from the outside <laughs> so you've got two options you could take a uh, ruler and some chalk and draw out those lines that you know exactly where to sew or what you could do is just um, use the guides on your sewing machine so what a lot of people do is just look at the edge of their presser foot and that's how they can sew straight. So for the purpose of this video, we're just going to make um, some lines with our chalk and it's not going to be very precise again because we're not like sewing an actual garment. But if you were, please make your lines more precise than this. I'm just eyeballing it right now. Wow. 
All right, so we'll just start with those lines right here. And in here, I'm gonna show you how it's done when you just follow the presser foot edge. And I'm actually just gonna mark a seam allowance to make it very, very clear. So it's just gonna be right here. So if my cuts were straight, this seam allowance would make sense. <laughs> right now it doesn't make sense, but it's fine. So yeah, let's get to sewing. All right, so like always, let's take a look at our machine settings. So we are going to select the straight stitch and the length should be higher. So mine regularly is 2.5. I'm going to adjust it to four and you should also adjust the tension, uh, whoops, tension right here. Um, to a higher, higher number. So I'm just gonna put it at 10 and see how that looks. Okay, I actually fucked that up. <laughs> so I'm gonna try again. So I'll lower my presser foot again. What I did is I just adjusted the tension back to its regular number, which is eight. So let's see uh, if that's better. And what I'm gonna do is I'm also just gonna hold that thread. Um, as I begin to sew. Okay, and then back stitch. Okay. Now I'm gonna hold it and start sewing. Okay. Once you get to the seam allowance, that's when you can turn it back. And as you can see, we have those pretty gathers right here. Now it is working fine. So you just stitch, stitch, stitch. Okay. And this is where my second line is. So I'm just going to lower down my presser foot. And now you just start um, sewing again. So you just got to stretch your fabric as you do this and try to keep it straight. It is difficult, but you can do it. just repeat that same process that we first did. Oh, I actually missed a couple of rows. I skipped this row. Uh, who cares? I don't care. Let's just lower the presser foot and keep going. And now, since it's my last stitch, I'm going to back stitch. I see that this was out of focus. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so I'm just going to put my uh, needle up without cutting the thread and take it out like that. And grab my scissors. Just so the elastic thread doesn't just disappear inside the machine. And this is what our shirring looks like. Uh, it's looking a little rough because I missed uh, one row of stitches, <laughs> but that's fine. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, it gives you a really, really nice, just um, elastic feel and it makes the fabric more comfortable and more adjustable. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a great look and this is what it looks like from the back once again doesn't look the best because I missed one row and I wasn't always sewing super straight. <laughs> but yeah, this is, you get the gist. This is how it should be done. Um, so let me show you how to uh, do more shirring, but this time following um, your presser foot as a guideline. So as you can see here, the edge of my fabric is at the edge of my presser foot. 
So I'm just gonna start sewing it like that. As always, back stitch. And as you can see, I'm really using my presser foot as my guideline. When I get to the edge, you just pivot. You can actually bring your needle up, just pull on it a little, just so it doesn't like gather up too much within the seam allowance, because that's annoying. Yeah, okay. So the reason I backstitched there is because I wasn't aligned with my presser foot anymore. But you don't need to do this. And don't forget to just stretch out your fabric while you're doing this. So my, uh, my previous seam line here is always on the edge of my presser foot. And I'm just going to finish it here to not waste too much fabric and elastic and <laughs> elastic uh, to not waste too much fabric and elastic. And this is what the gather looks like. And well, the shirring, I always call it gather, it's shirring. And this time I find it looks a lot neater. Um, I don't know. I'm just better, I guess, at following um, the presser foot. And it actually takes a lot less time because you don't have to draw on those chalk lines. Um, another technique that you can do is to actually, instead of like um, sewing and then moving and then sewing, what you can do is just do one full line and backstitch at the beginning and the end and then uh, cut off your thread and then do that again on every, um, on every line. Um, it does take a bit more time though, uh, but you can do it if you would like. So the last step once you're done shirring is to just take your iron and blow some steam. All right, hopefully you can tell, but that just makes the uh, gather a lot more gathered. Uh, it's just the finishing step and you can skip it if you want to, but it just makes it uh, a lot nicer, I find. All right, everybody, it is the end of day 18. You have successfully uh, learned shirring or how to shirr fabric. Um, yeah, I mean, your homework is just to practice. Uh, try using different settings, uh, play with the stitch length. Right now, I used a really long stitch length, uh, a stitch length of four. Uh, so that's why the gathers are very gathered but if you use a shorter stitch length it'll be less gathered so just play with that and make sure that you use uh, the right fabric because if you use a really really thick fabric it just won't gather at all so that's why it's always good to practice with a scrap fabric but yeah anyway the i think we're done for today so i will see you tomorrow